Hello, this is Derek from elventower.com. This is a tutorial on how to use my one of my map packs for Roll20. As you can see, I have all my assets already organized. You can see that each one of them has a number. It symbolizes uh, how much it has to be sized up for it to show not to show up properly. Let's start with the room. Uh, this one says it's a six by six room. So I'm just going to size it up to six by six. Um, as you can see, as soon as you size it up to the number that's on the file name, it instantaneously snaps to the grid and each square, it actually matches up. Now this, was, this one I'm doing is a, an eight by six, so I have to size it down a bit and that's it. Now I'm going to add a hallway. I'm just using the search box. Uh, you can organize this by tags and folders, but I'm just using the search box. This one said it's a two by three by four. And now I just make my room closer and it works now. Like if you keep repeating this process on and on, you can build a dungeon fast or a couple of dungeons I'm just gonna go ahead and and add more hallways and rooms. You can also rotate any of the pieces using the Roll20 interface. It snaps into place, it's pretty easy to do. Now we're gonna come to a a situation I'm just about to add a room but since I'm adding the room after the hallway the walls are not going to match up at least for a moment uh, because Roll20 adds files um, I mean they're in order in the other they're being added so as, as you can see right here uh, the wall doesn't match up you can just right click the piece of wall and send it to the front and it's fixed. Same thing is going to happen when I add a room to the top hallway. See the rooms, uh, the rooms wall is on top, so I just click send to front to the hallway and it works now. Start, it's starting to look pretty good. I'm going to add now a, a corner file. Um, all the hallways and corners in the pack come in single and, and also double. Like this one I'm just going to add. It's a double corner. Just gonna, just gonna rotate it and add. I'm not sure why Roll20 always sizes everything down to a single square. Um, I'm not Roll20 savvy, so there's probably a way to import files so that they're shown uh, right as it is now. I'm not sure, but um, as you can see, the scale is right on the file name, so folks shouldn't have much problem. That's it on my last room. Just gonna send this corner to the front. And now with my map pack, there's also some stuff like regular furniture and stuff you can put on the on the rooms. Um, all of it is tagged with the stuff tag. So I'm just gonna add some stuff to furnish the rooms. As you can see when you import something it snaps to a to a grid but there is actually a function to move right now I'm just cloning doors but there's actually a, a way to put things exactly where you want all you have to do is um, you just press alt and then like just what I'm doing right now just press alt 
and then you can drag whatever asset you want to the exact position you want it to be. So it doesn't have to be uh, always or everything doesn't always have to be snapped to the grid. I'm just adding some tables. Now this is especially important for furniture because um, the, the tiles and tiles, walls and rooms that you want to be snapped to the grid so the, dim so the dimensions match to the grid in Roll20. But for all the smaller stuff like, uh, like rocks, tables or general furniture, you probably do not want them snapped to the grid. You just want to uh, you probably want them close to the walls like this table or most everything else I've added. Of course, you're free to put them wherever you want. I'm just gonna add a, a altar, an altar statue to the big room. All right, now this place looks ready for a boss fight. some more extra stuff like this stuff a uh, list of assets included in this pack it includes some boxes tables barrels jars there's this that statue there's also a fallen beam there's pieces of rocks and there's also a torch light uh, like a, it's more like a torch scones which you can uh, you can add some illumination effects to the room not sure if that's uh, particularly useful since I know Roll20 has dynamic lights but I mean I just added it for fun and that's it a whole dungeon ready to play on Roll20 probably took me two or three minutes to do nah, I'm not really super good with the Roll20 interface, so you probably can do it faster than me. Thank you very much for watching this video. I'm Derek from elventower.com.